We do want to thank Harrington Harbor, obviously. This is sponsored by them. It's only open to Harrington Did Bay or Harrington Harbor members, so they've got a great facility here that they've made available for these types of presentations. So thanks very much to, to Harrington Harbor. So here's what we're going to talk about today. I'll first give you a sales pitch about the Yacht Club because we hope we can get some new members out of this. We'll want to know a little bit about you so the presenters can provide information that you need. Then we'll talk about how we select our cruising destinations, and then finally the actual destinations themselves, both marinas and anchorages, and then where you can get information to make those trips that you're going to be taking a lot easier and more fun for you. We're gonna end up and question and answers, and I think we can probably take some questions as we're going through. And if you do want a copy of the presentation, send an email to info at hbyc.org and you'll get a PDF of the presentation itself. So the Herring Bay Yacht Club has been around since, whoop, went too far, since 1955. It was set up in this area of working with what was at the time the Rosehaven Yacht Club down where Harrington Harbor South is located. It is both a social club that has a boating aspect to it, obviously. We've got about 150 members, that's both captains and first mates. We have members that are in various locations, the majority of them obviously come from Maryland and Virginia, but we also have, res have members from Pennsylvania and Florida. We also have people who join simply for some of our benef the benefits that we offer. The majority of the boats are at Harrington Harbor North and Harrington Harbor South. A number of our members have their own homes on the water and other locations, other marinas throughout the area that participate as well. About 70% of our members are, have power boats, 25 or 20% 20 have sailboats, and we don't even have to have, you don't even have to have a boat to be a member of the Herring Bay Yacht Club. And we've got about 5% of our members that join simply because they like the social activities or they are friends with people who have boats and they may travel on some of the cruises or come to the social events as part of the membership themselves. So that works out pretty well for us. We do a lot of boating related activities obviously, but we do educational programs such as this. We always have a fundraising where we provide money to one of the food banks serving the area around here um, for people who have need. So we do a little philanthropic things. We do pay attention to the legislative activities that are going on. Uh, we're members of some other organizations that provide that kind of benefit and we can provide input to them as well. If you join, the dues are $225 for the first year and that will get you a burgee of the yacht club that you'll be able to put on your boat. After that, the renewal fees have been $175 for about the last eight or 10 years. We always have some land events. Typically, we have about seven or eight of those. They're held primarily at Harrington Harbor South and at Harrington Harbor North. We occasionally will go someplace else for the parties. There is a small clubhouse that we have in conjunction with Harrington Harbor South where we have things like our chili cook-off, where we have members bring their chilies, buying for prizes. Deb happened to be the, the winner this past year, and Kathy, with the red hat who came in, was in second place last year, so you've got some real good cooks in the, in the club as well. We're having a poker run again this year. We're dinging around to some of the restaurants and bars here in the deal area to pick up cards, and then we'll have a party near the pool here at Harrington Harbor North where the poker run will come to its finality and somebody's gonna take home some money. We, all, we have a ball in alternate years, the formal change of officers. In the fall, we always end the season with a big festivity down on the West Beach at Harrington Harbor South. We're probably gonna have a pig roast this coming fall. That's always a big party. We've got a beer and wine tasting sometime during the year. So there's a variety of different activities that we do from a social aspect as well. We always try to help our other members as well. I was talking to, to one of the guests here this morning about when things go bad from a weather standpoint, it's not too unusual for a member who doesn't live nearby to call a member who lives in this area, and we do have a number of those, to go over and check on their boat to make sure the lines are set properly. 
if they're worried about something or somebody's supposed to come over and do some maintenance, we can do assist other members in, in providing that kind of a lead in and help others make sure that their boat's operating properly. One nice thing we do have is reciprocity with other sail or other yacht clubs throughout the United States. That means you have access to those clubs. You still have to pay for whatever you eat or drink at the clubs themselves, but you may be able to bring your boat and stay at the marina, or you can go and use their facilities for the bar, the restaurant, and things of that nature. And that reciprocity is one of the things that attracts a lot of the people who are traveling around the United States to our membership. We also do have reduced fees um, for Boat US membership, and that you can use that to get the, what we do is use it to increase the towing capacity or the towing coverage that we get through Boat US. We do always have a series of cruises that are scheduled each year. Typically, we do five of those. Uh, we normally do them on Memorial Day weekend, on Labor Day weekend. We try not to do it on the 4th of July weekend because we want to enjoy the fireworks that the marina puts on, so we do have a, a lot of participation at, at that event as well. Typically, our cruises are one or two nights on the weekend, and then we'll have a longer cruise that runs from maybe six to eight days throughout the year. The weekend cruises are some of the places that we'll be talking about today. This year, we're scheduled to go to Chestertown, to Rock Hall, to the little place called Slaughter Creek. Um, let's see, Solomon's. There's one more. Where's the other one? Fairly. Fairly. Oh, Fairly Creek, up way up, way up on the northern part of the bay. The long cruises, they're the cities that we visited in the past several years. This coming year, we're going to do what we call a river cruise on the south part of the bay. So we're going to go over to Cape Charles, which really isn't on a river, but on the bay itself. But we'll go to marinas off of the James River, Pagan Creek, um, the Rappahannock, the Potomac. We're going to do one on uh, the Patuxent as well. So we'll be visiting marinas along those rivers. So we always have sort of a theme that we have for these long cruises that we set up. For each of these cruises, whether it's the long cruise or a weekend cruise, our fleet captain provides information to the boaters themselves. And that includes a variety of different things. Obviously, the distance is involved. He sets up a routing map that shows you how to get to that location. <coughs> we also have information on the marinas. When we do have these cruises, we ask the members to make their own reservations at the marina itself. And then when we get to the marina, we always end up with a welcoming party. Sometimes we'll have a breakfast party and we'll have a dinner one of the nights when we're at the marinas themselves. But for the cruises themselves, the fleet captain gives instructions to the members on how to make those reservations. You get a chart of the harbor itself. You get information on debriefing based on weather conditions. Sometimes if the weather is bad enough, we'll cancel a cruise because we don't want anyone to get injured or run into circumstances that they're not going to be comfortable with on those cruises. Most of the trips that we're talking about in this presentation are within 40 miles, 40 nautical miles from Harrington Harbor. You can obviously do them on a weekend. Some of our trips on the, with the yacht club are longer. For example, Fairley Creek is probably, what, 67, 65 miles, nautical miles, something like that. Yeah, but what we try to do is get something that's a relatively short cruise so people can get there easily on a weekend, spend one night, come back home the following day. If there is some kind of a problem, either weather or something goes wrong with the boat, they'd be able to come back, back to their home port without too much difficulty. And we also look for a location where there's a hotel or some kind of overnight facilities for people who would want to drive and just participate in the social aspects once we're at the marina itself. So when we're looking for those definition, those destinations, we do want to find a marina that has the type of facilities we're looking for. We want to look at places that have either shopping, restaurants, bars, maybe some history, some architecture, some so you can get some educational information from it. A lot of these towns along the bay have scheduled activities and events, and we try to coordinate our cruises with those activities. Uh, so 
for example, the, the Chestertown cruise that we're going to have this year, there's a car show that goes on at Chestertown each year, so we're going to be there that weekend in October. So we look for different activities, we make sure there's something to do when you get to these marinas. When we get to the marina itself, we want to make sure several things work properly. First of all, when, the re when we talk to the marina and tell them we want to come for that weekend, we ask them if they can get our boats as close as possible together. So when we make reservations, we always indicate that we're part of the Harrington Harbor Yacht Club, and the marina will try then to put our boats as close as they can together. We're looking at the appropriate power control, the power level that's available at the, at the site, whether they have fuel available, to make the trip back home, and whether there's accessibility for people to make it through the docks itself. We look at how easy it is to get into the marina and, with the, and whether there's staff there to help with docking. We do have typically the first boat that goes in will have people help the other boats as they come in. So we do help each other when we get to the marinas. But having a good staff at the marina itself is quite helpful. We look for a pool, we look for a restaurant, things that we can occupy our time with and other than just sitting on our boats. Uh, typically there are some museums or some other facilities at these locations that we like to get to and within walking distance. And sometimes we ask whether there's transportation to some of the nearby activities. Some marinas do have bicycles, some of them have some shuttles that you can use for that type of purpose. Okay, good morning everybody. I have to tell you one thing right up front. I haven't done a presentation in six years. I got a little bit of scared this morning when I woke up, so please bear with me here. Um, so, okay, I skipped over them. So Middle Bay Destinations. This uh, presentation will cover uh, the area of the bay from Annapolis down to Solomon's. Um, obviously there's a lot more to the bay, but we're just gonna focus on these areas here. The first, uh, cruising destination we're going to talk about is Annapolis. It is 17 nautical miles from here. It's only three quarters of an hour if you're running from 25 knots. And that does not include the time it takes you to untie your boat and get out to the, you know, out, to the, out of the channel and bring it back in again. If you're going to four, about four knots, it's four and a half. Our boat is nine knots, so I'm, you know, it's Four knots, four and a half, yeah. So my, our boat's got two hours to get up there. So uh, you can figure it out from there. Um, as I said, Annapolis, 17 nautical miles from here. One of my favorite marinas, um, areas, I'm sorry. It's got, I counted 18 marinas in the area of Annapolis. Some are right downtown, some are in, over in Eastport. There's some out towards the Severn River more. There's mooring bowls that the town offers. These mooring bowls will take 55 footers. They'll take, some are only 35 footers. Some are uh, in the harbor itself. Some are in Back Creek, some are in Spot Creek. There's a number of them. They're first come, first serve. It gets crowded, no lie. If you wanna get one, get there early. Uh, Nancy and Peter went up last year and they said, oh, there's plenty of, plenty of walls, come on up. By the time we got there, there was none. So we wound up at a marina. Yeah. Um, we, we, we lucked out because there was a slip available there. You want to make sure you get a slip, you want to call early and, and book it. Town dock only allows minimal reservations, even their docks are uh, first come, first serve. <clears throat> Tons of restaurants, bars, hotels, lots to do. Uh, if you have a dinghy, if you're on a mooring, you can bring your dinghy into the town dock. Within walking distance, you've got McGarvey's if you want some oysters or shellfish, you've got um, Middleton Tavern, there's Chicken Roots right up the street, there's a number of great restaurants, there's shopping, there's a great ice cream store in town. Uh, if you want a little taste of the Caribbean, go to Pusser's and have a painkiller. You can get a number two, a number three, a number four, whatever you want. Um, plenty of shopping. There's a water taxi, so if you're at a marina, if you're not, if you're at the Cap uh, Maryland Capital City Yacht Club, a and Annapolis, Maryland, Capital Yacht Club, ANCYC. You can call the water taxi, they'll pick you up and take you into town. If you're over at 
the Annapolis uh, Marina, right next to Pusters, and you want to go to Eastport and don't walk, you can get on the taxi and go over to Eastport. So there's a lot of area to cover with just the water taxi. Water taxi, it's a couple dollars each way, so you know, think about that if you want to, but if you got a boat, you probably don't need to think about that. Um, so, just a, like an overview of the area without a lot of markers and everything else. You can see all the different marinas um, in the area. Uh, Annapolis Yacht Club, right next door is the Annapolis Yacht Marina, which is very um, convenient. Out here, AMCYC, uh, if you go into that marina, watch out for current. It can take you very easily. Um, you want to hit that one at slack because there is a lot of um, current that runs through there. Uh, over here, this is Back Creek on the lower part of the screen. There's a lot of marinas in there. Not as uh, user friendly if you want to get over to town. So keep that in mind. So here's a little chart. Um, I stole this with honor from Navionics. So please, uh, you know, if you're going to use a chart to navigate, make sure you have a current chart. Um, this this shows the white area up on the top of the screen. That's the, the um, channel running in. The center of that box is the mooring field. Now when you come into Annapolis, you're likely going to see a lot of boats anchored out where the, um, out here above the South Anchorage. The six knot zone starts there. Look for the white marks as you come in. It is a six knot speed limit. You want to be courteous when you pass those boats on the anchor. You're going to rock them. Um, we were anchored out one day. I came back to the boat after dinner and I found my pitcher of water broken on the floor of my, of my galley. Um, never expected that, but somebody waked me hard and that was not appreciated. Um, so here's the bridge. It goes into Spot Creek. That bridge opens on a half hour, an hour. However, it, it's closed for commuter time. So it's closed from 7.30 in the morning until 9, and then 4.30 until 7. We uh, got there at like 4 o'clock, and we're going to go back into Spot Creek to see if there was a mooring. No sense in doing that, because we would have gotten stuck for three and two and a half hours. So keep that in mind if you do need to go up in the bridge. The bridge height, I think, is 12 feet. I'm not positive but it's, it was too low for us to get through. Um, so when you come in, the, the, the blue box up there on the mooring field, those will take any size boat up to 55 feet. Once you go into the Spot Creek Bridge, the first set of mooring field on your right is only 35 foot. Uh, <coughs> then as you go up, there's a couple of other spots further up Spot Creek. There are some also in Back Creek. If you've got a dinghy, Dinghy rides up Spot Creek and Back Creek are a lot of fun because there's just so much to see back there and it's, it just goes on and on and on. And the houses are really neat and it's a great ride. Um, any, oh, other stuff to do in Annapolis, I don't know if you know, but in May, in the, the commissioning week for the Naval Academy, they have the Blue Angels practice on Tuesday and then they have the show on Wednesday. So it's another thing to do. Also, you can tour the Naval Academy They've got over 100 model ships in, in the museum there, so that's always an interesting way to spend your day. So now I'm going to move over to Kent Narrows. Um, Kent Narrows is 23 nautical miles from here. There are, it is busy, it is noisy, so if you want peace and quiet, this is probably not the place for you to go. Um, there are a few marinas in the area of, of, of Kent Narrows. The only one that I found with a pool is the Safe Harbor, Safe Harbor Kent Narrows Marina. There are tons of bars and re restaurants. There are a lot of dock and dine opportunities. There is really no walking friendly area or shopping. There is a, um, it's a Chesapeake Heritage Visitor Center where they have maps of biking and hiking in the area. There's a, a tower there that you can go up and look at the panoramic, uh, panoramic view of the area. Um, 
That is located on the west bank, northwest bank of Kent Narrows, next to the yacht yard. Um, there's great biking trails there. Uh, dock and dine area, uh, you've got Red Eyes, Red Eyes Dock Bar at the uh, Safe Harbor Marina. You've got Harris Crab House, which is Dock and Dine, so you can go up there for lunch or dinner. You've got the Big Owl Tiki Bar that you might be able to get into if you're a smaller boater. You've got the Narrows Restaurant. You've got Fisherman's, also Dock and Dine. Uh, Bridges advertises that if you go in there for Dock and Dine and you have a dinner reservation, that you can spend the night for $25. So if you want to go up and do that, that might be fun. And then there's always the jetty. The jetty gets busy. Um, you can look at pictures online and see how many big fast boats are there during the weekend. But if you want to go up and grab lunch, by all means, uh, the weekend, during the week it's not as crowded, so you can. That's a great time to go there. Uh, navigation. Let me just go to the marinas here. You can see Safe Harbors is on the upper right-hand side. It's on the northeast side of the, of the Narrows. Piney, uh, Piney Narrows Yacht Haven is on the west side of the channel, north of the bridge. Uh, Piney Narrows does not have a pool, if that's of interest to you. Like I said, Safe Harbors Narrows Point is the only one with the pool. Um, the jetty and a lot of the restaurants are on this west, on the east shore, I'm sorry, east shore of the, of the Narrows. Um, as you go up, you will see them. So when you're coming in to the, uh, the Narrows, the channel is pretty narrow, so watch it. It gets busy. Go slow. Watch other boats. The one thing to point out here is that no matter whether you're heading northbound or you're coming southbound, the red markers switch sides when you're after the bridge. So as you approach the bridge, you're going to have your red on your right. As you leave the bridge, your red's going to be on your left. So don't get confused as you get up there. It's always this red right when you're entering, red leaving, uh, red left leaving. There are two anchorages if you want to go uh, get away from the noise. There's an anchorage down here in Kerwin's uh, area, and then there's one on the well, south, south. West of the bridge, there's Kerwin's Creek where you can anchor, and southeast, there's Marsh Creek where you can anchor. Yeah. Uh, both have good holding, so you're okay with that. you have any points on this one? Oh, yeah, where Deb said the anchorage in Kerwin, Kerwin Creek, that's, uh, there's a wall there. For those of you that have been in there, there's a wall that's kind of where you can go back in there. You really gotta watch the depths uh, because it does show up and You've really got to be careful with that and make sure that your draft on your boat is you know, shallow enough to get in there. The other one that I point out is the current because you can see that's kind of like an hourglass. And you got a ton of water that's moving through there. And so you just need to be aware of that. So if you, um, if you're, especially if you're a new boater or maybe in some cases sail, sailboats are not as maneuverable as, as in um, a strong current, it's really fast. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it can be really fast. Just something you have to plan for, right? And one other point, bridge clearance. The Bastille Bridge clearance is 18 feet. So uh, if you draw more, you're gonna have to have an opening. Openings are during the season, half hour to hour, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. You have to call for an opening. Even though it's supposed to open, you've gotta call the bridge tender and tell them you wanna go through. Off season, it's six to six p.m. And if you miss the bridge, you're going to have to go around because they will you, they will not open it after time. <coughs> so um, one other thing, so coming from Harrington Harbor from this area, you're most likely going to be coming up Eastern Bay and then um, into Prospect Bay. And um, there's a point off of a, an island there, and you cannot cut, especially sailboat, cannot cut the corner because uh, that would be a very unpleasant day for you. <laughs> so again, just it's like anything else, you just have to be aware of where you're going, use your charts, use your navigation, uh, but there are some things in there. And then on the north end side, which you most likely wouldn't be, it's a very, um, the, the channel snakes around 
right? They've redone it a couple times and it can shoal. So again, you just gotta be aware of tide and current and those things. Question? What channel is that bridge down there on? Normally they're on 13. I didn't write it down. But normally on the 13. And you can call them on tow now too. Yeah. Are your depths in fathoms or feet up here? Those are feet. feet. Those are feet, okay. Yeah. Okay, St. Michael's, one of my favorites. Um, 23 nautical miles, quick run if you're doing 25 knots, maybe a little not so quick if you're doing four. Um, Basically across the bay, kind of head up oh, past Poplar, up to Bloody Point, and then down to the Miles River. Uh, multiple marinas and hotels. There's um, two marinas here that have a pool. If you want to go in the, in the summer and you want to cool off, you'd want to stay at either the St. Michael's Harbor Inn and Marina, or you want to stay at the St. Michael's Marina. There's a lot of shopping along Talbot Street, which is the main street in, in town. It's a nice walkable town. Uh, there's not only the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, which is always a fun place to go to. Um, there are tons of shops. Some are artistic, some are clothing, some are furniture. There's a lot of restaurants. Uh, if you've never been to Ava's in, um, in St. Michael's, the back room has probably the neatest wall of, of fountains I've ever seen. They're all different beer taps and they're always running and it's really pretty to watch. Um, there's any number of good restaurants there. There are, it's a water taxi, so if you are at anchor and you don't want to bring in your dinghy, you can call the water taxi, they'll come pick you up and bring you where you want to go. The, uh, there's a brewery, there's a winery and there's a distillery, so you can spend your day imbibing if you would like. Um, and even if you're at the Harbor Inn, they will come pick you up or they will drop you off. They have a little shuttle that takes you around. So that's always fun. Um, entertainment, there's a bar on the main street called Carpenter Street, great breakfast. They normally got a band on the weekend, that's fun. Uh, there's a little, fo there's foxies at the St. Michael's Marina. It's a takeoff on the BBI foxies. It's beachy. It's got some interesting little Caribbean take on food. They often have, <coughs> excuse me, they often have a band. Uh, the museum. You can go for the tour of the museum. They've got a nice store there. They've got uh, lectures that they do. They'll tell you all about the dove that they're building, which is a, was it, a, a, boat that was in the area, oh gosh, 16th or 17th century. Um, St. Michael's in the off season has a lot of events. They have the Taste of St. Michael's coming up at the end of April. In October, they have a fall festival. If you're hardy and want to go boating or if you want to go by car, they, in December, the first week of December, they have Christmas in St. Michael's and they do it up well. They've got a great parade, it's a lot of fun. Uh, stores are all decked out. Uh, at the Mar at the Maritime Museum, depending on your membership status, you can get a second night free. I was going to go there. Okay. <laughs> so for the, for the Chesapeake Bay Museum, I also have to plug one other event. The Chesapeake Bay Museum, they have a sea glass and coastal art festival uh, coming up the first weekend of April. Uh, Father's Day weekend is the Antique and Classic Boat Society uh, sh show and festival. That's the second largest show on the East Coast. Normally has over 50 boats. Uh, there's probably 35 different vendors that will be there. It's a great show. I'm a member. I'm on the board of that organization um, of the Antique and Classic Boat Society. Anchoring out is possible. Um, there are a lot of boats that do it. What you need to do is have the right anchor. So uh, we tried to anchor there last year. We could not because we have a plow anchor. And when I asked the dock master what was going on, he said the, the, the bottom is not, doesn't hold, a plow doesn't hold in that. You need either Danforth or a fortress anchor. If you have the right anchor, you're gonna be fine. 
You can anchor right off the museum, and there are also tons of boats that will be anchored out in the harbor. So the one thing I do want to point out about St. Michael's is that it the trip there includes the Eastern Bay and then the Miles River. And once you go, the Eastern Bay can get a little choppy, Miles River can get a little choppy. The channel's really well marked. What you need to be aware of is that in some cases, the marks for the shoals are on the shoal. So you don't want to cut too close to those marks. Watch your charts. When I come around up the Eastern Bay and I go to make my turn into the Miles River, I honor the, the marks, but I don't stay in the channel when I'm in the Miles River. I know I can see the depths on the charts. I know how much I draw. So I'm not gonna, it meanders around. My boat goes slow. So if I meander around, it's gonna take me longer. So I just watch my charts and I take, take, take my course accordingly. Um, there's always boats anchored around the Miles River at, at the harbor, to the, at the entrance to the harbor. So you wanna pull it back so you don't rock them. And just watch, the, the harbor can be really busy. It's pretty narrow in there. So just take your time. Um, so here's a little chart of the harbor itself. It's not that big. St. Michael's Marina and the uh, Harbor Inn are right across from each other. As you enter the harbor, they're gonna be on your port. The Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, if you do stay there and you're a member, their rates are significantly cheaper than either of the other two marinas. Last year it was $2 a foot at the at the museum, five dollars a foot at the Marines. So um, be nice, join the, join the, uh, support the support the Chesapeake Bay Maritime <coughs> Museum. And as you just pointed out, if you up your membership, you get a second night free once a year. Um, the other thing to do, if you want to do a day trip to St. Michael's, you can take your boat over to Crab Claw and park in Crab Claw and have lunch. Crab Claw is right by the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. I'm gonna flip back to the museum a minute. If you are staying at the museum, you might wanna call Doc Master before you go and ask him what your slip is, because depending on where your slip is, you might have to go on the outside wall here, A, or around the back. So it avoids flipping around and traveling around. Just a comment from experience, uh, if you're on that, that wall, if you're on that T-dock, the prevailing winds will generally pin you on that dock. Uh, so be prepared, you're gonna need fender boards and, uh, and some warping skills to get off. Yeah, if you're swaying, you want, you want your outside engine and your inside engine in reverse. <laughs> and you're <laughs> or you're just gonna have to stay longer. I'm sorry? You're gonna have to stay longer. So the, you have that on the, on the outside here on a dock and then on the other side of the boat shed um, we were up against the wall and I had a piling on the outside of the boat behind me and not much room to get around so it, you know sometimes your docking skills have to come into play so uh, a couple points here as I said you've got to watch um, it gets real thin just at the top on the by the point there, it's only a foot or two deep. The shoals are pretty big. Um, make sure you give a lot of room. This spot in between red number, what's it, 25M and three? Uh, no, two St. Michael's and three. The red and green there marking the channel. It's not real wide. So as I said, traffic can be a problem. Um, we went out last year for a short ride and I got out past the anchorage and I think I'm fine and all of a sudden I'm watching my depth drop. I didn't realize uh, I, was in three, I was heading for three feet of water. So it does sneak up on you. So you want to make sure you're, you're careful on that one. Anything else on St. Mike's? Uh, I think you hit it. Uh, one thing is they do log canoe races. Anybody seen a log canoe? Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But <laughs> little boat, big sail. But they are very tender. So you gotta really be courteous if you see them, because they you can actually turn them over. They have these things hiking boards, which again doesn't make sense to me. But 
you know, they, when they go over, people go under water. So that's one thing. There is right up in this little top part of the area, uh, next to um, down from uh, Crab Paw, there are a couple free slips in there, but they're really competitive to get. So if you're coming in for a day trip, you can kind of look there if you want to try to get a slip. Uh, and I, that, that's really it. That's a good job. Okay. I, yeah, Crab Paw, you can call ahead and they'll, they'll hold the slip for you. So. Did you outline the Anchorage area? The Anchorage area, there are a couple slips. Uh, there's a couple anchors. You can grab a couple boats in uh, by the marina up here, in between the marina, uh, the museum, and the inn at Ferry Cabin. There's a couple places in there where you can anchor. Um, and then the Anchorage is really outside the harbor up here. You can get, there's only a couple inside and, the harbor. Yeah, right yeah. here that you can get some but too. It's, but it's a small area. Yeah. So you, you know, depending on the size of your boat. The only other thing I just thought about, the water taxi does run there and that's great. You gotta watch the times on it because you know it, I think it ends pretty early. So if you're looking to go to Carpenter Street and loop it up, you're gonna come back and you're gonna be spending the night on the shore. <laughs> so you do have to watch you know the times on the on the water taxi, but they're they're quite good. We this is we had tried to anchor in here by just eleven foot of water, and that's where our anchor would not hold. We tried like three or four times, and we couldn't get it to hold. And then I found out we had the wrong anchor. So um, in the Chesapeake Bay, there's a lot of oyster shell, and sometimes that will mess you up. It won't allow you to to, to dig in because even though it's predominantly mud, that's one of the things that can you know one of the unique things to the to the bay. I think. Any other questions on St. Mike's? Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Wayne Crossford. All right, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, so, I, my first experience with Chesapeake Bay was like 40 years ago. And um, I had not done a lot of boating, primarily on the Potomac, doing a little water skiing. And then a friend of mine who grew up on the water, he says, hey, I'm going to do this you know, trip around the bay. And uh, it's a 20-foot, well-crafted air slot, so a little cutty cabin. And it's in August. Do you want to go? I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Looking at it. So we literally started in Chesapeake Beach and worked our way up through Annapolis, up in um, uh, like Stony Creek, Rock Creek, uh, Baltimore, then down to Kent Narrows. And who's been to Annie's? It was called Poseidon then. That's how long ago that was. Right? So then... So Kent Narrows, and then down to St. Michael's, yeah, uh, St. Mike's, uh, and then finally uh, Oxford, and we ended up pulling out of Salisbury. So that was my first introduction to the Chesapeake Bay. And by the way, I couldn't swim then. So anyway, um, so let's see, I'm gonna take you through a couple of different uh, locations that we like. Uh, who's been to Oxford? Okay, it's a little, uh, you know, slower, right? A little more quaint. Um, not a, not a long haul. I mean, you can do it in a day trip, and I think that's some of the things that, that Deb pointed out, that a number of these you can do in a day trip, break weather, right, and depending upon the, the boat that you have. Um, so again, there's the times, running at 25 knots, the boat, last boat we had, ran at, you know, half that. So you just have to make a decision there. Um, a couple things, you know, you are going across the Chesapeake Bay, uh, and you start to, you know, that's one of the things that's taken to consideration, right? You're in the open bay, and if any of you've been out, you know, depending upon again the weather, you know, it can be a pretty significant uh, experience. Uh, so, like I said, kind of a, a slower, more quaint, quiet. Um, the, the marina that I have the most experience with is Safe Harbor, and it's fantastic. You know, beautiful little uh, clubhouse, bathroom, showers, um, all floating docks now and very near uh, one, of the, one of the restaurants. So when we say, like somewhat down there, say somewhat walkable, um, there is, you know, there's the closest restaurants would be Robert Morris, which is, I'll show you on the point, and then Capsize. So that's in Town Creek. Uh, so if you go to Safe Harbor, you know, that's very walkable. And then after that, it gets a little different. Uh, when we say limited transportation, think no transportation. So there is no Uber. There's, I mean, if you get an Uber, they're coming from Easton, right? That's how far they are. So we really had to, we went there last year and it was absolutely fantastic. We just had to take that into consideration and work things out with the marina. 
So they actually, one of those staff used their car and drove us, which is, that's phenomenal, right? Just gotta, gotta plan for those things. Um, let's see, uh, restaurants, uh, there's some great restaurants there, there's about five. Um, let's get rid of the, yeah, so uh, up in the top, it's Town Creek, and I'll show you the navigation chart. Uh, basically where Safe Harbor is, that's what I just talked about. Uh, and when you, you can walk right over to Capsize, um, which is not, it's, you know, 10 minutes or so. And then Robert Morris is on, if you look over to the left, right, at Safe Harbor. Robert Morris Inn, it's been there forever. Beautiful little inn, great restaurant. And then you go up the main street, you know, which is like 8 o'clock at night, they pull the sidewalks in. That, that's it. It's a very quaint little town. Um, and then uh, where you see Campbell's, um, that's another one of the, the main marines there. And then right where it says Oxford, that's uh, Doc's Sunset. Uh, big restaurant, bar on the water, a lot of fun, I mean, very busy, but that's roughly a 30 minute walk from Safe Harbor to there. So if it's August and you're, and you're not very mobile, that's a long walk, but you'll definitely get your steps in and you'll lose all that weight that you gained at Doc Sunset drinking beers and <laughs> eating all their, uh, all their fried food there. A uh, little navigation part here. Uh, so again, Chesapeake Bay out here. So you're coming into the chop tank and it's very exposed there, right? So when you come down the bay, uh, when you're coming, if you come through Black Walnut, so that's around the end of Tillman, you know, that's, you're, you're exposed and the chop tank's a big, big body of water where you have the bay coming together, you've got the chop tank coming together, so it can get, you know, in the right conditions, it can get pretty rough. And in the summertime, winds are predominantly south, so that's coming right up in there. So again, all these things you have to keep in consideration, but if it's a calm day and you've got a good weather window, you know, it's, 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 it's definitely a, a day trip, right, depending on your guess. How is it cutting through Naps and Arrows, if you don't? Depends on the boat. Um, yeah, I see. So, you know, if, if, you, have, if you have a, yeah, if you have a, you know, it's all based on draft and your comfort level. Uh, you know, if you look at the chart, we don't have, it would be easier if we had kind of a dynamic chart to show you. Um, the water uh, gets skinny in there in the channel. There's currents that, again, because if you look at Kent Narrows, you've got a very skinny, um, section that you have to go through and you're moving a lot of water from one end to the other, right? So, it's so all that, I've, I've gone in there uh, numerous times, different boats, but again, that's my comfort level. The other thing is that things change. So, a lot of these channels over time will shoal in and you get periods of time where they're not dredged and you'll get a little spot that forms and that's, you know, some of the resources we'll talk about They'll identify those things or notices to, to water, to, um, to boaters, uh, and just local knowledge, right? If you're, you know, I, I, I generally call, even though we use things like Snagaslip and Dockwood, I still call the marina if I hadn't been there and I say, hey, is there anything to, you know, is there anything to be aware of, right? I don't turn my responsibility over to the person I'm talking to, but certainly I'll take all the local knowledge that, that I can get. So, you know, it, it's a uh, good question. So back to here, you know, this is coming up into the chop tank and then Tread Avon, which is a beautiful, beautiful river up above um, Oxford, gorgeous. Um, ton of water in here coming into Town Creek, which is the uh, channel you see there. Uh, plenty of water, well marked, uh, and there is a little bit of an anchorage. People do anchor out over in this little, this little well here, right? over in here and um, so so quite nice and very well protected so there is a restaurant so like I said there's about four or five there is a restaurant out here called Latitude 38 and that's a really good restaurant but again you know transportation matters so if you can get work something out with the uh, marina to have them take you there you know it's, it's really good uh, there's another restaurant, Post Creek, which is down where you see Oxford Yacht Agency. I don't know if they're, they're open or not. They were being sold. So that kind of comprises my, my five that I was thinking about. Uh, that's it. Any questions? Great place to go. A lot of fun. Very, very relaxing. Okay. Cambridge. Who's been to Cambridge? 
Good, good. A lot of hands. So same kind of thing here. What I talked about is, you know, pretty much you can see exposed bay here, right? And then you got to come down around Black Walnut, and then you want to see how big the chop tank is. It's a pretty big body of water. And then Oxford, and then Cambridge is all the way up the, the chop tank, right? So it's, it's a pretty decent run. It's 30 miles, depending upon if you're moving at those speeds, and if it's a sailboat, of course, or, or trawler, I mean, it's, it's a, you know, it's a decent run, right? It's not a day trip, in my opinion, because if you run into any kind of weather, which is the other thing you have to think about, like, I can get there, but maybe it's going to be more difficult for me to get back, or maybe I'm just going to, I would stay there, right? So those are some considerations. Uh, so Cambridge Yacht Club and the city dock are all in the same uh, kind of bulkheaded area of a lot of slips. Obviously with the Yacht Club, you know, we tend to, to go there because we get reciprocity with them. But right across the, the um, fairway is the, the same body of slips and things. Um, it, it is walkable, so it's about 20 minutes roughly. There's about 10 restaurants all throughout the town. And um, their quality, I think COVID kind of hit them like, like a number of places, but they really uh, up their game in terms of the type of restaurants that are there and the, the variety. Um, you have uh, RAR, the, the brewery. If you notice when Greg was kind of explaining the club, you know, we're a social club with a voting problem. <laughs> you know, party times. <laughs> but, you know, there are a lot of great restaurants, a lot of good bars, and RAR is really fun, open air when the weather's others nice. Uh, I'll show you in a second, you know, the Hyatt. So people talk about the Hyatt. It's a fantastic place to go. It's in a very different part of Cambridge. So you're not going to, you know, be at the Yacht Basin and then walk over to the Hyatt. You know, it's, it's in a different location and a different experience. Certainly if you're staying at the Hyatt, they can figure out a way to get you into, you know, into uh, to town. Uh, let's see. And there is, you know, shopping. Uh, so that's one of the, the criteria that we look at as a club. So what are the things that there are to do if we're going to be there over a weekend? You know, what are the other parts of that experience that we want? And shopping and, and um, cultural events. Uh, I don't know if there's a museum or anything there. I'm not, I don't think so. There's, there's a small museum. Is it? Yeah, right okay. in the downtown. All right. I've never been there. You can yeah. see my priority. <laughs> okay, and then they do, they do a great job. Cambridge does a great job in terms of a lot of activities throughout the year to drive, you know, people to do things there. Uh, they have a power boat um, coming up in May. They have power boat racing, so smaller uh, things like Jersey Skiffs, which is kind of a crazy boat to be in, but uh, but anyway, so that starts out in May and then goes through, they do, uh, they have a schooner race there, or no, they have a schooner, uh, skipjack race, and then they have a schooner event, right, so big schooners, and I think that's an offshoot of, uh, I think, the um, schooner race. But a lot of stuff going on there. Um, so a lot's really interesting to do, and certainly you can spend, you know, a, a weekend there no problem and not get bored. So, kind of what I was talking about, if you look up there, which is Cambridge Yacht Club, that's also the yacht base and also called City Dock. There's a little park there in the green space. And, um, and then way over there, above the bridge, is the height. So that gives you an idea of the distance. Um, two, two, different, two different things. And then this, um, they do a lot of commercial uh, manufacturing of ships and repair. So the channel is really quite good, and then this, body of water that continues back into the town. Uh, there's a couple of little restaurants. I think Snappers is there. It's a pretty fun place. And they also do the uh, one of the docking. Has anybody seen the, the docking contest? So they do that there where the watermen come in and they do the super fast docking and it, it's pretty cool. But that's one of the places that uh, on their um, schedule for the year that they, they go. Any questions so far? Just a, a point. So uh, I've had power and I'm currently on a sail. So that bridge is a, is a great delineator, if you will, because you can't get the sailboat through. Okay. So when you're at the uh, higher Regency, which I think is, is a great place, yep. um, you just be conscious you can stay on your boat mm -hmm. or you can stay at the hotel, which I think is a good mix sure. you know, of both. 
Um, and then the, re the uh, museum is the Harry Tubman, so that's a really great oh, okay. museum. Uh, you can kind of I thought that was a uh, black water. I'm sorry? Harry Tubman, I think, is a black water. Oh, is it? It no, it's one at each place. place. Oh, it is. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. So cool. Really thank you for the um, Can you say you have which case it already is that one? Uh, at least mine here. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it doesn't open? Or? Yeah, no, I would take it on. It does not. It does not. Do you know what the clearance is? I think it's 50. Do you know the clearance? I don't. I think it's 50. I'm not sure. I think it's 50. It is. We're going to talk about 50 feet. Oh, 50. Okay, thank you. That is very beneficial. That is yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Yeah, the one thing, the one tricky thing on uh, on uh, Cambridge Yacht Club and Cambridge Municipal Marina, it's kind of odd the way they have to set up to get in there. So you have to go almost past it on the chop tank and look for this little breakwater and then come around it and come in. And the current runs in there, and you can get a little snaggled up if you don't want it. Exactly what, um, thanks, that's a good segue. Um, so you'll see the channel, and it's, it's quite good, but as Deb was saying, so where you're, the main part of the marina and the basin is back, so you actually kind of go past it and then come into the channel. It's well marked, and if you see, you know, if you, again, if you have a, you know, what's going on? You know, what, what are the currents doing? What are the tides doing? If you have an exceptional tide, one way or the other, you know, the depths over on the nearest number four, you know, I would maybe make my break a little bit, a little bit sooner, right? As I start going towards the entrance of the basin. Okay. All right, Somme's Island. Somme's Island, really cool place, right? So, you know, what's, what's different about this is that, you know, this is all pretty much open Chesapeake Bay, right? So over here before, if we get across, we've got some protection, you know, different different approach. This is all open in Chesapeake Bay in the summertime. Where do the winds come from? South. 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 What way you heading? South. South. Okay. So, might be not so good going down, might be great coming back. Or, the gods are against you. It's on the nose each way. <laughs> right? So, anyway, um, but a really cool place. Uh, 33 miles, and that's not <laughs> including, you know, once you get in there and get to your slip and all that stuff. So, you know, um, we had a boat that went like 15 knots and we would plan two and a half hours, right? With good weather, right? Good, good weather. Okay. Sailboat all day long or, you know, end Sunday, right? Good, good long night. All right. Um, I already talked about that. Uh, there's a bunch of marinas in there. I think, what did I say? like 11 marinas. Uh, we've stayed in like two or three as a club, I think, something like that. Dan Hives is a popular one. We've been at Spring Cove. Uh, there, there's a ton of marinas uh, and a bunch of restaurants. So like, you know, nine or 10, depending upon uh, who's open and closed, um, you know, at this point. Um, I, I'd say a big feature is the Calvert Maritime Museum. And we've gone through that. It's really amazing. That was one of the things we did kind of as a part of the club. Really interesting. There's another small museum there where they did um, basically a packing house. And you go in there and you look at, um, you know, it's kind of the, the time left behind. It's as it was when it, when it closed. And so a, a, a number of interesting things. And there's also, um, let's see if I go. So over on the other, I, I don't know exactly where it is, but there's a big arts place and gardens. It's huge. Again, you would need transportation, I think, to get over there. Was it? Thank you. Thank you. But so, you know, in Solomon's, you know, definitely a lot of things to do to keep you occupied uh, while you're there, not just kind of hanging out or hitting uh, bars or, or restaurants. Uh, let's see. Tiki Bar. Who's been Tiki Bar? Who said my ties and remembers it? <laughs> <laughs> so the Tiki Bar has gone, you know, it's had its cycles of opening and closing. It was there forever. Uh, it, it is supposed to have a uh, an opening this year. Who's ever been to the grand opening Tiki Bar and remembered it? You remember it. <laughs> so so really really a lot of fun. Massive amounts of people. I mean, you really gotta 
you know, be okay with crowds and things. It's a little early in the season, right? It's <coughs> April 22, 23. But it's a ton of fun. Um, you know, one of the great, great things to do there. You know, once you start out here, open Chesapeake Bay, there is one marina, I think it's called Breezy Point. So if you, you know, it's 30 miles, but still, it depends on what weather you might get into if you have a <coughs> mechanical. Um, there's Breezy Point, and then there's another one that's more private, but there are two places that you can kind of go and, and get help. And again, if you're not moving 25 knots, you know, the, that, that really matters, right? So to give you an idea of um, when you come in, this is really kind of the, where a couple of the key restaurants are down in here. The Yacht Club, you pay attention to those things. Um, and then there's a little, I'll show you, there's an island there. But then a ton of marinas up and down. This is called Back Creek, and I think this is Mill Creek. And so you see up there kind of an anchorage. Uh, so that's a, a nice place where it opens up, more protected. So from a navigation perspective, piloting perspective, there's really, so out here, Chesapeake Bay, right, Cove Point. Um, there's, coming down, there's landmarks, there's the LNG, look at that, called the gas docks. Big, you know, you have to be, pay attention to that because when we were loading and offloading, there's issues there. Um, great fishing spot, by the way, but they kind of move some people back. Um, two ways to get in, there's a, you see good deep water. There's a channel that runs along kind of the shore when you come in around the point. You can get in this way, or you can come in, it's, this is a little further, but you can come in to this section here, you can see the water depths are really quite good. Uh, the Tuxent Naval Air Station over here, and you have to, you know, they, they do a bunch of stuff, especially during the week. You have to pay attention to any, you know, <coughs> some restrictions and things happening, but it's pretty much over there. And then coming in, again, a bunch of fuel. There's a little island, I think it was uh, Spoils, that when you come into the harbor, that's kind of a separating area here that you go around. There's a fuel uh, fuel dock here, right? And there's a bunch of fuel services, you know, all sorts of things. So very, very, very um, rich in terms of resources that if you need to um, have any work done or anything like that. All right, so we could go on and on and on and on, right? So what's it, the same amount of coastline as California, right? Just okay? That's one of the statistics. So huge, huge. But um, kind of the top part, because we're just kind of hitting the middle part and some of the key things that we really enjoy. Um, and, but there's a bunch more. So Baltimore is like 40 miles. So, you know, not, not out of reach. Middle River, anybody spend much time in Middle River? Okay. Some really cool places up in there, right? Some neat, neat marinas and restaurants. Uh, there's a place called Sunset Cove, which is further up by Martin State Airport. Um, Hart Miller Island, uh, they've done a lot of, like Poplar Island, we didn't talk much about that, but Hart Miller Island, they've done a bunch of, that's a spoil site. It's a little, it's a park now, like a natural area. So tons of stuff to do up in there. Admittedly, we don't know as much, but it's a really neat, neat place to go and explore. Fairly Creek is a fun spot. Um, the biggest thing there is current. It's a very narrow, if you've heard about it, um, the channel runs right next to the beach, and people sit out there with lawn chairs, and they great you as you come in. <laughs> and, uh, I got to go bathe. Yeah. So anyway, but but when you get in there, huh? Fairly Creek. Um, you mean that's where they greet you when you come in? Yeah. yeah. They sit in the lawn chairs with yeah, the yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like so 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 oh, up cool. above, like so so northern, right? Just on the, get it in on, there too. It is, it is, but it's absolutely, it's really cool. Because when you get in there, it opens up. And it's a huge bay. Um, a lot of people from Baltimore go there. A lot of um, go fast boats. It's a cool spot. Again, we can go on and on and on. Um, there's a safe harbor marina. I'm sorry? Yeah, there's a safe harbor marina, you're right. Uh, Talchester is another. They've really invested in that. That's down from Fairly Creek. Uh, I think that's like 32 miles, if I'm not mistaken. Really fun. They established a nice restaurant, and, you know, bar there, floating docks. Um, not very far. I mean, it's right on the bay. It used to be a big, um, uh, like, amusement park back in the 1800s, 1800s, right there. So, 
Um, but small, and there's nothing else there. Once you get there, that's pretty much it. So Rock Hall, we could go on. It's probably one of my favorite spots in terms of variety. There's two kind of experiences, in my opinion. There's the main harbor when you go in, then there's Swan Creek. Absolutely gorgeous, um, great place to anchor, a number of beautiful marinas there. Uh, and in my experience, one of the best fireworks that I've ever attended in, in the harbor. Really, really cool. Uh, Chestertown, uh, we're gonna go there. The club's gonna go this, there this year. Um, 45, maybe close to 50 miles long, you know, but very meandering river, super deep, um, you know, and then all new floating docks and uh, uh, let's see, uh, Owen Endcock, over the years, this is really, they put the town, I think has put a lot of investment into it. It's really cool, beautiful river coming in uh, and then a neat little town as well, you know, very Eastern shore uh, experience and um, but quite, quite far down the bay, right? This is definitely not a day trip. And then Cape Charles, you know, hello, Atlantic Ocean, right? But again, really cool if you have the time. Um, there's a, they've invested a lot of money in terms of commercial uh, maritime there. So big yards, and then there's some really neat uh, restaurant, uh, Oyster, is it Oyster? Yeah, Oyster Farm. Oyster yeah, Farm. Oyster yeah. Farm Marina, really, really, really nice. Okay, and we like I said, we could be here all day long. Uh, let's see, so we're shifting gears a little bit, and this is going to be primarily kind of anchorages and day trips, you know, specifically within that 20 mile or, or way less. Um, and, you know, the club does a mix of things, you know, overnights, which are fun, but then also, you know, I think the wrap ups have been, you know, as much, you know, or maybe more fun in certain ways. It invites um, smaller boats. Right, that, that don't have or they don't want to do these long cruises and allows people to get together and just enjoy you know, a fantastic resource that we have here. And then also we kind of focus on restaurants and then you know, doing it overnight. You know? So that's kind of the other part of boating and people like different, different aspects. Uh, who's been to Lowe's Wharf? Uh, not so many, okay, here we go. Good, so to me, this is the cool part of your boat. Because if you're going to drive to Lowe's Wharf, it's a really long drive. But by Harrington Harbor, by boat, it's 30 minutes. The right day, right? Great weather. But it's right there, and it's a cool, cool place. It has gotten, it has gotten super, super popular. And I mean, on the right day, the anchorage is, is full. I uh, saw a couple questions over here. What's a small boat? Can you say small boat? Small boat, you know, let's talk draft, you know, so two and a half. Three yeah. feet, maybe something like that. And you start getting into a standard sailboat. Yeah, probably not so much. Bigger boats with you know when you're into three and a half, four, you really have to pay attention to the tides. Uh, and I mean, you know, when when does when does the the juice become not less you know than than, than the squeeze? So those are the decisions you gotta make. So I our oh, our boat had four and a half feet. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I went in and I which was, is yeah, which, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was okay, but right. they picked the right day and yeah. the right time. Yeah, you know, three, three feet, three and a half draw, you know. Still got to watch tides, got to watch where you're at. Uh, you know, the chart is an approximation, right? It's, it's depths taken over time. And then there's this thing called shoaling, <laughs> which happens as well. So, you know, it's all kind of averages. Um, so a couple things. Hey, um, yeah, sorry. I'm going to answer your question right here. Go up Harris Street to the town of Sherwood from the back side and anchor. There's plenty of quite a bit of water there. Are you talking about up like Dunco? Is that what you mean? Yeah, above Dunco. Yeah, above above Dunco. Okay. You can anchor there and walk over. Yeah, there's a dock. There's there's a dock. Is that what you're? Okay. All right. See, they're going they're going friends. Well, I'll show it on the chart when I want to get to Dunco. Is yeah. the food good there? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's yeah, a fun place. <laughs> that was last year. You know, we're based everything on last year. Who knows? Um, it, Do they have wait staff? Do they have a cook? It's not a it's not a fine dining location. That's not a I mean, you know, you're going to Lowe's work for an experience and I'll you know talk about it. No nope. uh, When I say no, nope, we'll, we'll get there. Okay. So so we say ideal is a first cruise, you know, caveat is first cruise kind of across the bay because it's short. 
you know, you are going across the bay, and again, depending upon the weather window, right? Some of the other stuff that Deb's gonna talk about, I think might be a little more first cruise kind of thing, because uh, it's on the same side. Um, don't count on a slip, and if you, if you get a slip, it's super shallow, right? There is fuel there, again, don't count on getting back in there. Super, super, super shallow when you get back in. And then there is a, uh, a, a shuttle, they have a, a dinghy, um, and they either anchor ball or anchoring, and then they come out and, and grab you up. So, all right. Um, now let's get to the important part, why you're going. So it does have a restaurant. They have a food truck that's theirs as well because they've expanded over time. I mean, when I first started going there, it was not very busy, and now it's crazy busy. Um, Bulkheaded beach, chairs, they have a ring toss, they have, I mean, there's a ton of stuff going on. Think like beachy, think tropical, think, you know, a lot of fun, you know, kind of unique experience on the bay. That's why you want to go there. Um, and music, live music. So, yeah, this might say a things. So, Harrington Harbor over here, Poplar Island, as they build up over time. Uh, this is called Poplar Narrows. And well marked, decent depth. You do have to watch it, as Deb was saying, because in some cases, right outside the channel marker is your ground. <laughs> right? So there's not as much uh, latitude there. And then down here I'm going to talk about is Naps Narrows Tillman, right, which is even less of a, a cruise and still has certain navigational aspects. But if you want to talk about, uh, like anchoring is right into here, right up here with, with balls, there's one on either side of the channel. This is even, even skinnier, even less water, right? So again, you're gonna, when you're coming in there, you're gonna be on your toes and be very, very aware of all the tides and all the stuff, current, not, not a big deal. Points? I was told that the north side of the channel has a little more water than the south side. It does. So if you want to anchor, you know, it shows four feet, mean, top mean, three, four feet, if you go in and hide, you know, it's close. Yeah, it's north, yeah, north is where all the balls are going to be and where you primarily anchor. The backup parking lot <laughs> is on the south side, and that's where people start kind of going to. Or it'll start coming out, right? And you're getting even closer to the traffic there. Um, I would not, you know, if you got to do it overnight, because they do serve alcohol. I've been, you know, I've heard people that might need to stay overnight. It's not very well protected, so probably not my first choice. Uh, and there it is. Wow. Wow, right? So there's, this is probably even older, but like, you know, beach here, um, tiki bar, restaurant, another tiki bar, I think food truck. So in that picture, where is the mooring ball field? Mooring ball field is gonna be over here. Okay. Right, channel, channel is right here, coming in. And I mean, I'm telling you, there's no, well, these are, you know, working boats, right? You know, shallow, uh, the fuel dock is down there. I mean, it's it's really, really thin. Uh, okay. And then the south side of the channel over here is kind of the back, literally the back up, you know? You try here and then you go over there. Hit it? Okay, next one. So Dun Cove. So who knows where Dun Cove is? There we go. All right, very good. So Dun Cove is a really cool spot. Uh, again, it's not very far, really. And when you get there, you know, you feel you have a very, um, somewhat of an isolated experience, right? So not too much. There are a couple homes around there, but pretty much very natural, uh, good deep water, and not that far. And again, it depends on how you want to get there. Um, so we talk about this Black Walnut Point. That's the end of Tone Island. So you have a choice. If you have a proper draft on your boat that you're comfortable with, you can go through Naps Narrows. I'll show you a little picture of that. Uh, and that shortens up your ride. When you come out of Naps Narrows, it's pretty much going to port and a couple, not even a mile, I guess, or two. And that's what um, Pete and Nancy were referring to up in this creek, uh, which is where this um, anchorage is. Uh, and it's pretty well known actually in the bay. It's kind of a kind of a dunk hole for people that are, you know, people that are going up and down the Chesapeake Bay and ICW. Um, 
Okay. But pretty much, so here's Nash Narrows, right, right through here. And as Deb was saying before, I've actually seen it uh, where, you know, there's always a one coming into a, a harbor, right? And then there's a, another one on the other side in this case. So if you come in this side, right, it's conventional red right returning from sea. And I've seen people go through the bridge and then they kind of forget because now you're coming on the other channel. So it changes, it's just something to be aware of, right? So Dunn Cove is up in here. Uh, and it is like nine or 10 feet uh, of, of um, water. Well marked, basically you make that turn at the number six and you're right in there. And then uh, Pete, one of our members, Nancy, uh, said if you go further up the creek, there's a bridge, oh, sorry, there is a, uh, there's a dock up there and you could walk and take a dinghy and walk to Lowe's Wharf. You're really working for your, uh, <laughs> to, to do it, I don't know. So I, I've done power, I've done sail, I've raced sailboats, I've fished, so I, have, I don't have any um, propensity for one or the other, I like them all. Uh, okay, so here's kind of another view of of Naps Narrows. So while we're in the neighborhood, I thought we'd throw this one in, but real quick, Naps Narrows is nine miles, so it's even less, right, than Lowe's Wharf. Um, again, you have to pay attention to the depth and currents and all that, but there's some really good restaurants in there. Mark the Five is great. Smoked food, if you like that barbecue, it's awesome. Characters is over on the other side. Uh, when you come out of Naps Narrows, this is really, really, really shallow coming in here. This is uh, Buddy Harris's uh, old place. Buddy Harris is a, you know, been, had been around forever. Um, and there's a place in there called Tickler's. It's like a little crab cracking, uh, uh, what would you call it? Kind of, a, kind of a dock, right? But you, you gotta be, you'd have to be really, really careful to get in there. But there's some two, two good restaurants on uh, the uh, northern, eastern, uh, western side. And, and then, Chop tank and all that. Okay. Questions? And Harris's, yes. huh? Harrison's has been sold? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah, a couple years ago. Yeah. It's now actually one of his employees bought it. Right. Oh. So we tried to go in there, but we wouldn't let us in there even for lunch. Really? Yeah. Went into the uh, hotel? No docking. Or you mean the dock? Yeah, no docking unless we wanted. Spend the night, but not on our boat. Oh, I wonder how that's working out. You could not. You couldn't stay on your boat. You had to stay in their hotel. Wow. Maybe they've changed. I don't know. That doesn't sound good to me. Okay, and just to ask for clearances on that bridge. It's a drawbridge. It's a drawbridge. Yeah. So if the clearance is not what you want, they'll get it for you. And I don't know the times or things on it. Pretty normal, 13. But it, there's not, there's, there's yeah, hardly any, clearance. There's hardly any clearance under the yeah. bridge. He'll, he'll I mean, it's, if it's eight, eight feet, maybe 12 feet, 10, 12, somewhere there. Not a lot. Okay. All right. So I'm going to turn it over back to Deb. Okay. We are now going into anchorages. So um, these are really close to uh, Harrington North. Go spend a night, it's a great place. So West River and Road River, it's only 15 miles. Um, even I can go there a reasonable amount of time. So West River and Road River, a lot of people from Harrington to Harbor Marinas goes up, go up there. Uh, one watch out is the sh there's shoaling on the shore as you approach the west, uh, the road river, no, the west river, I'm sorry. When you approach the, the west river from the bay, there's all shoaling on the uh, outside there, and there's a lot of crab pots, so just be mindful of the pots, be mindful of the shoaling, honor the marks, don't cut corners. So the shoaling, you can see right in here, is two feet offshore as you're coming up to the west river. Um, you want to, you really do want to try to honor at least number two to get around it and make sure you get into the harbor okay. Um, so I'm going to start with the West River. Um, West River has Stan and Joe's, great for lunch, 
You can take any size boat up there and dock. Uh, you might want to get there earlier on the weekend, so you make sure you get the dock. But they'll accommodate a 50-footer if you need to. Um, they've got a couple good size slips. Pirates Cove is also up there. Yeah. Pirates Cove, uh, if you have a smaller boat, there's a lot of dockage. Uh, if, you want a, if you're in a bigger boat, you might want to call in, or you might want to anchor out and then dinghy in to get dinner or lunch. Uh, but Stan and Joe's is great to run up for lunch, quick day trip. So when you come in the West, when you come in the West River, you come down, I've got to get my markers here. Yeah, so you come down, you've got a, um, a, a wake zone when you get closer to the restaurants. San Joe's and Pirates Cove are right in here. Uh, there's an anchorage over by the Chesapeake uh, Bay Yacht Club, Chesapeake Yacht Club. There's a small yacht, there's a small anchorage there, so you can drop anchor down by Pirates Cove and then you go wherever you want to. Uh, Road River is no restaurants, it's just quiet, serene, beautiful place to anchor, well protected, spend the night. Um, you enter the Road River from the West River, watch out for the pots, there's tons of them. Watch out for the crabmen. I was going in there last year. I'm cruising, you know, I'm going slow, taking my time, watching out for the other boats. And this power boater throwing a huge weight, almost dumped the crabber over. Like, could you pull it back? <laughs> but he didn't. Um, you're not going that far, take your time. Uh, water's really protected from wind and weather. Uh, you can drop your hook, don't have to worry about losing it. It's got great holding back there. No issues with um, with anchoring. Uh, there's really two anchorages in the road, or three anchorages in the road river. The first one, as soon as you come in to the road river, off here, off of these two marks in here, there's um, anchorage. There's one submerged piling that you have to watch out for. It's clearly marked right here. Want to stay away from that. Um, and then the other area is further up the Road River. So when you come up and you round the corner here, you see this triangle in the middle at three foot? That is marked by three, uh, three markers. It used to be an island, it's sunken. It, you don't, uh, when I was there, I didn't see anything. It's very shallow, you wanna stay away from that. You can go close to Big Island and anchor in there, or you can go up to the top. Um, the Smithsonian Educational Research Center is on the western side of the shore up there. You can dinghy in and go get trail maps and uh, great kayaking up there. There's very natural, very quiet, serene, great place to spend the day. So other day trips. Um, Magathy. Magathy is north of the of uh, the bridge at Naples Bridge. Um, great place to go to anchor. We took a bunch of boats up last year. We anchored off down the backside of Dobbins Island. What's really nice about the Magathy is because it's on the west shore of the Chesapeake and north, you really don't get any sea nettles. So we went the end of August and we had a great time. We all just hung out in the water. There was nothing nothing going on with the sea nettles, so nobody was getting bitten. Um, tons of boats back there. We had, what, six boats yeah. anchored up together for the day. Yeah. Uh, somebody broke into Tom's boat and stole the vodka. We have, still haven't figured out who that was. <laughs> um, Gibson Island is just a little further up the Magathy. You kind of veer to the right after you pass through, uh, go into the Magathy River, go around the back side of Gibson. There's a lovely anchorage back there. Well protected, you can hang there for the weekend. People go back and party and just hang out. It's a great, great anchorage. Um, Wye River is over on the west side, on the eastern shore. There's Shaw Bay back there. Uh, second week in September, there is a, there's a wrap-up concert. So there's a band that plays over there and it gets real busy. Uh, another great place. A couple more places that I did not talk about uh, for lunch, if you wanted to take <coughs> or even a dinner trip with a great sunset, uh, on the bay side of Kent Island, right by the bridge, 
um, is the Bay Bridge Marina. There's a restaurant in there, it used to be called Hemingway's, it's under renovation, it's now going to be somebody's coastal, was Libby's Coastal Cuisine, I think was the name I saw. Um, sunsets are great, floating docks, great place to go if you want to spend the night or just go up for lunch. Another one, um, if you are a boat that is doesn't have four and a half feet of uh, draft, is Kentmore. So Kentmore is halfway up Kent Island uh, on the bay side. It's kind of thin getting in there, so if you have a smaller boat, feel free to go in. It's a nice restaurant. They have a beach there, and you can grab some lunch there. Uh, there's South River. Uh, South River, you can go up to Mike's. It's also Dock and Dine. Within, within distance of uh, Harrington Harbor for a day trip to go up for lunch is fine. Okay, back to Wayne for resources. The thing, so what is the number one most important thing to have for planning? Charges. Charges it? Charges? Weather. Weather. Right, weather. Backup. Credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Credit card. Yep, both U.S. Now we try to keep you. That's why we do these. US, keep you out <laughs> no, so all, all those are great answers, right? So you want to, you know, doing any of these trips we've talked about, even the ones that are short, right? The Chesapeake Bay is pretty unique, and that's why we, we really love it. It's also unique in terms of it's, uh, it's very shallow, generally speaking. It's a big body of water in certain places, and that creates some real anomalies when you begin to get into weather. When I talk about weather, my comfort level, which is the other thing, you know, how comfortable are you as an operator? Um, who do you have on board, right? Because I might be able to tolerate 20 knot winds, the boat might be able to tolerate more than that, but I've got people on board first time, that'll be the last time, right? So all that stuff comes in and that's real. I mean, that, that's, that's real. So all that stuff is very important. So. We could go, this is another one, we could be exhausted with this, but these are just some things that we've kind of put together over time, <clears throat> different sources of information that help you in your planning, right? And for me, I never have an, enough information. I want as much as I can possibly get. So, simple things, you know, for kind of ideas and things you want to do. So Chesapeake Bay Magazine is really good. Um, Prop Talk and Spin Sheet are the same organization. And then they have another one, it's a fishing base. But they have um, things like, uh, we'll, we'll identify restaurants and, um, uh, you know, restaurants and bars up and down the bay, they'll have a little a map on there. And these are virtual too, right, they're on, online. Um, but great sources of information and tell you, you know, a lot more than we would have time to get into about a particular place and help them make some decisions. Um, the Destination Marine. So now we've, you know, kind of gone to a virtual world and we're booking everything and snag a slip and dock walk. Well, if I'm going into a place that I don't really know, I'll call them and I'll say, hey, can I get to the dock master? I'll say, I'm coming in today for, for lunch or overnight. Um, what, what dock are you booking on? Ah, A. Well, where's A? Okay, and they explain it. Well, is there a boat there? That's right now, that's always there. Yeah, 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 there's a big blue house. Great, so I just know a lot more information when I came into that location than I had if I just booked it on DOCWA. And they're, and they're fantastic, they have other resources there, but that's the stuff that I look for when I come into something I haven't been into, which makes that a lot more uh, relaxing, maybe better, uh, better uh, experience. Chamber of Commerce, um, I mean, you know, just Google Cambridge, and you'll get this litany of, of information about what's going on in the town. Um, for us, you know, again, kind of being uh, members of this network, the Yacht Clubs, they're great sources of information and tell you like those little, little anchorages that we don't know about or little, little gunk holes and things like that or a certain restaurant, okay? Um, crab decks and tiki bars, there's a theme here, right? It's a great book. Uh, we got this as a present, they have a Maryland, they have a Virginia. And our goal one time was to go to a place in here. <laughs> 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 Um, Bay Tripper, I mean, you know, it can go on and on. So just, again, give you information. More about the destination, these two things, not as much about the nautical side. <coughs> Deb, I'll let you talk about, um, and then uh, we'll get into some other stuff, but, you know, good old paper. 
right? Who has paper charts on their boat? Every hand should go up. Yep. Every single hand, right? So the electronic stuff is cool and it's amazing, but it will it, it will and can fail. All right. So litany of stuff, right? So the ones I'm familiar with, uh, putting this presentation together, we kind of went back and forth. Active Captain, if you're Garmin, uh, really good, um, fantastic charts, has a social network of information that, that comes in, people share info. Again, you gotta trust your source, you gotta know your source, right? Never give over the responsibility of your vessel to somebody else, but these are all good things to compare. Argo is, a, I think, a newer application. Um, free, a lot of these are have a free aspect and then you pay, or if you have that particular chart plotter on your vessel, then they uh, sync with each other, right? But Argo is a decent one. Daydreaming is uh, um, informational. It, I think it's okay, it's not, not uh, fantastic. Coastal boating is another one for anchorages. So that's just looking at kind of uh, day trip anchorages, um, that's kind of what that focuses on. Dockwa, who uses Dockwa, right? For, so for setting your, um, securing your slip, but they also have information in there about that facility and what kinds of, you know, fuel and, and all those kinds of things which are really, really important. Uh, this one I kind of came across, it's called Aquamaps. The cartography in it is fantastic. I mean, it's probably one of the, the most detailed charts I've ever seen, and it is a part of, what do we got? Okay. Uh, Marinas.com, Marina Life. I use Navionics myself, um, and I keep that on, uh, you put it on, a, it's Android and, and uh, iOS, and you can run it on your phone, you can run it on a tablet, and then you can use their chart. Uh, so I can go in in Navionics, and I log in, and I can do all my route planning. And then that's, hey, uh, magically on my other device when I get on the boat, right? And then also some chart plotters use Navionics. So that, that's one of the ones that I use. And then Waterway Guide, I'm, I'm always impressed by that. And I think it gets better and better. Uh, <clears throat> so you'll have a combination of things in there, weather sources, uh, different layers of, of charts that you can lay on there because during this, you know, you look at the Navionics stuff we use for, um, to show you the navigation. It's really not, it's very detailed and it's great when you can be dynamic with it. But I think in some cases, NOAA is it easier to kind of get an, an initial <coughs> assessment on. And then I'll use different layers to where I want to get into, like sonar charts, I think is Garmin. So again, different things, you know, different like a car versus a truck versus whatever, different sources. Waterway guy kind of brings all that together. There's also measuring tools. There's measuring tools in Active Captain and some of these others. <coughs> um, what I noticed with Waterway Guide, it's a very easy to use and you can actually save out the route with giving your legs, right? So this steer this course for this many miles, this degree. It's really, really good. So that's probably my favorite, my personal favorite, just my preference. Anybody have anything else that they use? Yeah, for, for a new destination, I find Google Earth to mm -hmm. be very useful. You can drill down and give you a very good view of shoreline's features. Sure. Yes, and it gives you a perspective. What we were trying to do, um, uh, we had two charts in there, right? We had a graphic that kind of, to give you an orientation of the location. Because if you look at that Navionics chart, rich in detail, it kind of, you know, unless you have time to kind of study it, it's it's a little overwhelming. And so we try to give you the other perspective and Google would give you that perspective. Like, what am I seeing initially? Get my head around it and then start bringing in these other tools, right? And so anything that helps you understand where you're going and get more information and feel more comfortable with it, you might see uh, landmarks on there. We're running a little short on time. So weather, right, probably one of the most important, if not the most important part of your trip planning is to get that sense of what the weather's gonna do and not only going over, but coming back. And again, in the summertime, you know, fronts come in very quickly, uh, so all that. Windy, uh, I use for a general, I mean, it's great, it's visual, it has so much information in it, and that's generally where I go first. 
because it's very visual. And I can kind of get my, I can see the direction of the wind. I can understand all that stuff. And then if you want to dig in deeper, there's uh, sail flow or predict wind. And predict wind has probably the most extensive amount of models that you really got to want to get into and understand. So different, different models for different things. But, you know, windy, I'd say very, very good. And sail flow is the other one that I've used for a really long time. Uh, so it gives you, because it's giving you different visual cues on what's going on with the wind. And I also look for trends, and I'll compare these things, right? And if I see something that's really like the polar opposite, then I really want to dig in a little bit more because I want to see things like averages. I want to see those things line up and be, give me some confidence that I think that's what it's going to do. And then it won't do that anyways. But it's pretty good. Uh, now the Shot Club. Um, Racing and then weather, they have kind of a one-stop shop for Middle Bay. And it's a, a, a grouping of these different tools there. So that's one that I use over time. And NOAA, so NOAA weather. And TPLM2 is Thomas Point. That's Thomas Point Lighthouse. And once you hit that, then it will give you all the forecasts up and down the bay, from the north part of the bay all the way down. But I go to TPLM2 and I get, that'll show you dynamic. So what's going on right now? It'll give you the forecast. And I keep looking at these things over time. Uh, Weather.net tides, right? So tides, vertical, currents, horizontal, right? We talked about how a current can really impact when you might come or not go into a place. And then uh, fish currents is, is visual. Uh, so it actually shows you the direction of the current, the speed, all that kind of stuff. Very, very, very important for sailboats or solar vessels, right? Because you can end up stopping, right? Doing just stop in the water. All right. So, so what I want you to do: use the resources to plan your trip. Hopefully, you've gotten a lot of good information out of this. Uh, be safe. That's always the first and most important part. Enjoy your boat. You know, get out and use it. Uh, enjoy the bay, and we would love to have you guys uh, join Herring Bay Yacht Club. Um, this is just a, you know, we've got 165 people with a lot of experience and different perspectives and allows you to, you know, do things together and, and enjoy the boat, right? Get, get the benefit out of the, even if you don't have a boat, right? Uh, here's how you find us, Herring Bay Yacht Club on our website. And then also, see, real people, real cruising, real fun. <laughs> That's right.